Hi, welcome back in the shop. We're still working on the straight edge and I decided to try a few things to refine my scraping. So I'm in the process of doing this, I'm also learning a lot of new stuff. As you can see, I got a way more even um, distribution of my high spots and also I got not really a checker mark. Um, you can see that better with a bit of shadow here. Um, I got somewhat of a pattern. Um, Mr. Richard King um, wrote that to get a nice even pattern, you should each scraping mark should be individual. It shouldn't um, connect to each other. So. Um, for example, you make a straight mark every 10 millimeters if there is a high spot. If there is no high spot, you don't make a scrape mark, scraping mark. But if there is a high spot, you make a scraping mark and you go um, every 10 millimeters in, in, uh, over the surface. And in the spots between the 10 millimeters, between your scraping marks, if there are still high spots, you come in at 90 degrees in the same path and clean that up and that gives you somewhat of a pattern. Okay, I, can, I, I think you can see the 2B scraped surface pretty good from that angle and there we go. Okay, I went over the surface in the first direction and now I come back. Uh, 90 degrees offset and clean up the remaining high spots. 36 pass, some offset by 90 degrees. I make the decision which point I scrape and which point I don't scrape right away on the fly. I Sometimes I decide to leave a high spot because it's very small or it's only a lower high spot. You can tell that by the color of the, um, of the, of the, of the die cam. If the die cam is very dark, it's a lower spot, a lower high spot. If the die cam is very light and surrounded by a dark ring it's a high spot and if, if the if a high spot is really polished it's a very high point okay there are another two passes in and we start to see somewhat of an even pattern on the high spots the um for my understanding you want an even distribution of the high spots and um, want them all to be 
somewhat in the same size. Okay, now we got all in the first direction and the remaining high spots will be scraped off by changing over by 90. First of all, we clean off the cast iron dust. We don't want it to mess with the surface plate. And anytime you do scraping, you get a burr and you want to remove it. Um, I like to use acetone or alcohol for the stones because it evaporates very rapidly and doesn't mess with your um, die cam on the surface plate. I know that the pros use um, petroleum, but um, I got so many times um, petroleum into my die cam and that messed up my whole um, the whole bluing and then I switched to acetone or denatured alcohol, both were fine. It's just to keep the stone wet and also I changed to a um, to one of these Degusid ruby stones for removing the burrs because they are that fine and also they are very flat if you hold a straight edge onto one of these stones They are flat, they are that flat and they stay flat. Now you can see that we get, we get a pretty decent surface and also a pretty decent surface finish. Um, I'm very happy how this turns out. Okay, we're going again for the surface plate. This is what we're looking for. We're getting a very nice, even pattern. Uh, yeah, 
it's it's getting very good. I will go a bit finer I think and then I will leave it to my friend to finish it by hand because I have to stop somewhere and this is just um, at first I just wanted to machine this straight edge for him on the shaper but it got a bit out of control and I started to scrape it so I have to stop somewhere and I think this is a good starting point for him to finish it so um, I will I will do a bit more work on that surface then we will do the bevel surface <coughs> okay I set this up on the granite surface plate I cleaned off all the die cam I put a pair of I put a pair of parallels on the surface plate I checked them before if they are the same height they are I checked them with the 2000 style test indicator we're checking if this surface is straight and we're doing this by spanning the workpiece over the two parallels and we're now running an indicator on the bottom surface which references on those two parallels um, we can see if the workpiece makes a bow or is straight running the dial test indicator along the bottom surface and um, we will get a lot of needle movement because this is a 2000 millimeter indicator 2000 millimeter per um, graduation mark and because of the high and low spots of the scraped surface the needle will chitter all over the place but we will get an, uh, a pretty um, good understanding if this is bowed or it's flat and also we will see the how deep a scrape mark is As you can see, by running the indicator along, it's it always goes back up about to zero. Um, it drops a lot into the wileys, but overall, the wileys are about uh, five thousandths of a millimeter to one and a half hundredths of a millimeter deep. And for my understanding, that's a bit deep, but not, nothing to be concerned about. I can always come back and refine the surface by, by scraping it a bit finer. And also we can take our part and turn it around. And check the back side. We start also at about zero. And end at zero. So the workpiece is straight. That's something we already more or less knew by checking with the, with the high spot blue and with this um, with the mesh in a straight edge but now we have a third um, we checked it in, a, in, a, in yet another way so we can be very sure that that thing is straight or at least um, pretty straight okay i just wanted to show you how how the straight edge will be used we're over at the shaper and the ways on the shaper are scraped and during the process of scraping as we did with the straight edge you need to touch off and spot the surface and on a machine tool often you can't take your machine part because it's too heavy or too, uh, strangely shaped and take it to a surface plate you have your, to take your master surface to the machine and this is what the straight edge is for. Of course, this is only for a very short uh, machine way. This is, as said, this is for a top slide. And because of the bevel, this will go into the dovetail of the top slide. Um, 
but I can show it to you on this way here how this works. We blued up the straight edge, the spotting surface with the die cam. It's kind of thick here just to show you um, so you can see it in the video. And then go onto the surface, make sure it's absolutely clean so it doesn't scratch surface or your uh, master surface. And give it a rub. And then you get your um, bearing pattern. Um, of course this, this straight edge is way too short for that way, but as you can see this where it's pretty even and um, everything matches up and I know that the ways of this machine are straight and in good shape because it's almost like new and um, everything fits together. If I had here now a very big hollow spot in the center, I would be pretty concerned about my straight edge, but it's not the case. It's more or less even. Um, there is some oil left on the surface, so it's a bit smeary. Also, I get a bit much color on it, but you see the, you see the concept behind it. Okay, we're back and we're from the demonstration and now we go for the bevel surface um, because the piece was bowed in that direction we expect this surface to be slightly hollow in the center and we'll check that by giving it a rub And as you can see, we we hit pretty hard on the ends and almost nothing in the center. Just for fun, we'll use the hand scraper. Um, this is just a a long piece of four millimeter cold crown steel. It has a clamp on front here, and it holds a carbide scraper blade. And on the back is a file handle. Um, if I had to make another hand scraper, I would put put a uh, mushroom-shaped handle on the end, not the file handle. And now we go to work. And as you can see, it's um, it's a bit more of a rough process uh, on the uh, start. By hand scraping, I, I like very long strokes for roughing to get some material away. Now we go over and give it a rub. First of all, we um, we have to deeper it. I put some liquid on there. In that case, I'm using uh, alcohol. Remove the burrs, don't go crazy with the stone, and give it a rub. And this is the pattern after the second path, or after the first path. Here you can see the bearing pattern after the second path, and we're, it's getting pretty fast, way better. 
even if uh, if I'm still in the absolutely I'm chiseling away material more or less I'm really Okay, I will do a few passes off camera because then I can have the music running and just go for it and I will use the power scraper. Um, maybe I will do later another pass with the hand scraper, but um, you have seen the principle and the, the, uh, the working procedure itself is, is absolutely the same, only that the machine does most of the hard work. Okay. I did in total six passes until now and I got it uh, it's kind of flat already um, it's just it's uh, horrible uneven I will do another pass with the hand scraper um, the hand scraper is the best way to get started but um, after you did some scraping you You want a power scraper, that's that's pretty sure. And you don't want uh, only to, to scrape away the color. You want really to dig into the material and make some chips. Um, if you only scrape away the color, you will be there forever and nothing will happen. Start with the bevel surface. Okay, we get a, a pretty nice, more or less even pattern. There is not so much of a bearing up here, but that's fixable. Respread the color, and now we go for the big bottom surface we already did. the pattern on that one. The bottom surface is a bit better just by looking at it but I will stop here with scraping. I just need to face off the ends. I'm doing that on a milling machine and then we're going to tap the ends for um, grips or handles. I think um, I think you got the concept of scraping. Uh, it looks it seems like there is um, not very much information out there, and um, to some people it seems to be a bit of a mystery. But in my mind, it isn't a real mystery process. It's it's a, it's a craft. You have to learn it, and um, practice it 
I'm not that good at it, but even I get pretty decent results. By okay, it. I set the straight edge up on the milling machine's table to face off the ends. We're going to use a 10mm 6 flute carbide end mill. It's a uh, finishing end mill and we're just going to take a pass on both sides. And also I um, I put blue masking tape on all the um, on the scraped surfaces to protect them from um, any mishaps while machining like small chips or stuff that gets imprinted in the surface. I don't want that. I don't need it. Uh, also I don't want these surfaces to be scratched so I taped them. And now we're going to face the ends and then we will put the part upright and drill and tap it. Okay, I have to take the full height in two steps because um, the, the cutting edges or the flutes of this end mill are slightly too short, about one millimeter too short, so I'll take it in two steps. some handwork we're going to chamfer the edges or break the edges I don't want to go crazy on it just break the edges so Okay, and that's the reason why you want the weiss that you can lay on the side and it's still square. So you can hold tall parts upright on your machine's table. And I'm just going to freehand align this hole and drill, it's like on a drill press. Uh, and then we will power tap the 6 millimeter thread in. Okay, I got the straight edge finished. Um, I engraved it with the current date and 
that's it it's done I got all sides all around machined the ends are drilled and tapped for handles and the two reference surfaces are scraped to a medium finish they already work for touching off surfaces but in my mind to be used as a real reference tool it should be a bit finer but that's up to the future owner of this. While we're at the topic of scraping uh, I wanted to show you this little project I did uh, about three years ago or so. Um, it's a hand scraped not with the power scrip, it's hand scraped um, toolmaker's block with chips in it. Um, it's used uh, like a 1 2 3 block, but um, it's, it's a bit bigger and it has threaded holes all over the place. It has slots to be clamped down on the milling machine table and it has two through holes so you can bolt it that way to the machine's table um, yeah it's machined from one solid hunk of um, cast iron it's scraped to five thousandths of a millimeter on parallelism and uh, squareness all around on every surface and I'm, I made this box for it at the time I was thinking that green felt would be suitable for a um, precision tool and I still think it is. Um, there are also two fences that you can bolt to the side of this block so you can reference pieces into the edge of it and a handful of screws that also goes with it. Um, this project is, I saw this in the, I think it was the first Bad Side Reader by Guy Lautard and there was this toolmaker's block, his version is a bit bigger if I remember correctly and I thought at the time this is a great project to learn how to scrape a block on six sides square and parallel and it is it took a really long time but um, but I got it done and it's a real neat thing to use you can use it in every direction it's always square so this is one of my older projects this was way before I did this YouTube thing Also, an older project of mine are these two box parallels. I got the castings off from eBay and I started, I machined them on the shaper and I started to scrape them. But um, it got a bit odd and um, they lay around for about a year now. Um, I need to get back to them. Uh, sometimes maybe this year um, I got a few surfaces already scraped um, I want both of these box parallels be the same height same width and same length um, and that's a whole other challenge you have it's it's tricky I already got um, the height on both parallels The same, it's this this top surface is on both finished and the bottom surface is also finished. Um, now it's a matter to get the other sides square. I already started here to rough out these side surfaces but uh, I'm not very far with it. Maybe this year and maybe I will shoot some of it on video so um, yeah, I'll try to get some of it on camera, but scraping on video gets odd with... Uh, it's always the same, you, you look for high spots, you scrape, and so on and so on. But 
what could be interesting in this uh, with this project is how you measure squareness and how do you change the geometry of a part. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.